Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with another Minx Monday Q&A, and before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using, and that is the Chanel Jumbo in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. I was using it this past weekend, and I am in love once again. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started with the very first question. From Katra Jones, I've always wanted to buy the Speedy Bandolier 25, but I haven't brought myself to do it yet. Would you say that that bag is worth that amount of money, and that it would last significantly longer than most bags? Uh, this is a great, great question. Uh, you guys know that personally for my own collection, I don't, um, I don't want the, the bandolier speedy. However, I can definitely appreciate what that bag brings to the table. The fact that it is so incredibly versatile is just amazing. And, uh, the good thing about a speedy, or if you go with any iconic bag, it always holds its value. So if you ever want to sell it in the future, you kind of have that you know, that, that, that peace of mind for it. And as far as it lasting significantly longer, you have to think that, uh, the canvas bags are obviously very, very carefree. Uh, the only one that you have to worry about is obviously the Demi Azure because it is a lighter canvas and you always run the risk of color transfer. Uh, and really the only thing that you have to worry about is patina and, uh, how you want the patina to, uh, to get darker or how you want the patina to eventually get, you know, the, that golden honey color, or unless you want to use a solution to kind of speed up that process. But regardless, I think that, uh, whether you use that bag as a workhorse or you use that bag just as a casual set, you know, just a casual bag, I think that it's a great, great bag and, uh, they definitely hold their value. And, uh, the 25 is, is a very cute size. Personally, I think it's a little, uh, the opening is a little too small for my own liking, but I, I know a ton of people out there that love their bandoliers and they love the fact that they can have that iconic style while still being able to be hands-free. And that is a major, major selling point. So I definitely recommend it. And as I said before, even though it is not for me, I definitely appreciate it. I mean, just ask our girl Jerusha. She loves her bandolier speedy. Okay. Next question. Uh, Savajun, what's your opinion regarding Versace bags in general? Um, you know, I think that they have a pretty good price point, but personally, I don't like, uh, the way that they're made. Uh, they tend to use a lot of glue. I've seen some on sale when sometimes, uh, especially if you get like an off white color or just like a, a light pink, uh, bag, you'll start to see that the lining has quite a bit of glue cause that's how they tend to put the bags together. So I'm not a big fan of that, but they have a pretty good price point and, uh, I really don't, uh, I really don't like the, the styles that they have for them for the ones that I've seen anyway. So I'm not, I'm not too big of a fan on them. Uh, okay. Huey, uh, I have a keep on 45 and I'm planning on getting a Pegasi 55. Very nice. My question is when I purchase the Pegasi or any other bag with the lock, can I request the same lock and key number as the lock on my keep all without having to purchase new locks? I would like to use one key for all the locks when I travel. Thanks for your help. Uh, this is a great question. I actually thought that about the same thing when I got my keep all 45, uh, so that I could have the same thing on my keep all 55. And, um, they try to find the same, uh, lock for, uh, for my keep all the same number. And, uh, they didn't, they didn't have it. So they ended up just giving me new locks. Um, but, uh, you can always request it, uh, because obviously they have, sometimes they, they tend to have, uh, quite a bit of, of keys on hand. Uh, but more than likely they might just give you a new lock. Uh, maybe they might even give you a new lock for both. That way, if you explain to them what you want to do with them, I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll try to help as much as they can. Uh, okay. Okay, Jesse84, what are your thoughts on some essays hot stamping SLGs with more than three characters? For example, I have seen some items on Instagram where people have gotten their first name hot stamped. My essay says that LV can only hot stamp three characters. Should I try another essay somewhere else? Or how do you think that those people are getting this done? Um, what are my thoughts on the essays hot stamping SLGs with more than three characters? I think it's, I think it's fun. Uh, obviously when you're hot stamping something, it's because you really like that item and you really want to, um, you really want to, you know, think about keeping that in your collection. So if you have your, your entire first name, obviously <laughs> there's not too many people that, unless you have a very common name, uh, but like for me, <laughs> it wouldn't be, uh, it would have to be something that I would definitely have to keep in my, my collection forever. And I think it's really fun. You guys have to think about how, uh, I felt with the, uh, with the Mon Mono piece way back when they used to be able to do 
Uh, they used to be able to do just one initial because that's what I wanted. And unfortunately, I had to go with two, but I still love the bag. And I think it's up to the whatever the person decides to get. It's all personal preference. And it really has to do with how good of a relationship you have with your sales associate. Uh, some el some essays will definitely do your whole name. I have seen uh, your whole. I have seen a whole name plus the uh, the last name initial. So it really really depends on how how much of a connection, how great of a relationship you have with your sales associate. Because if you have a newer essay or if you're new to the brand, uh, some some sales associates might be a little you know cautious as to maybe bending the rules a little bit. Uh, but definitely a good sales associate helps with that, with that, um, hot stamping. Uh, okay. Ariel Sanchez, what are your thoughts on the Steven Sprouse roses never full? Oh my goodness. Okay. So obviously I love the whole, uh, Takashi Murakami and Mark Jacobs, uh, combo, but I really do love the, uh, roses collection. Honestly, Steven Sprouse had some very, very creative uh, lines for Louis Vuitton. And even though I think I, I'm not too big of a fan on busy uh, prints or too much going on on a bag, there is just something about the Roses Neverfull that is just absolutely gorgeous. The Speedy, the Neverfull, even the graffiti line that they came out with, I absolutely loved. I, I don't know. It just... I mean, some people might think it's super tacky. I even remember one person saying that it looked very 80s. <laughs> okay, well, I'm a, I'm a child of the 80s, uh, you know, and I just love how fun and how it wasn't, it was, it, some people might think it's a little too much, but I just thought that it added a kind of, I don't know, it just was so creative and I loved it. I absolutely loved it, especially when you get the hot pink interior in the Roses Neverfull. It is just stunning. Wow. Uh, okay. Terry Hayes, can you please help me decide out of a totally MM or an artsy? I think both would be great, but I'm torn. I love the look of the artsy, but I'm not sure if it's a funk as, as, uh, I'm not sure if it's as functional as the totally MM in monogram. Okay. So here I brought out my, uh, my artsy. I love the bag and uh, I wasn't always, I always liked the way that it looked. I wasn't, um, too set on how functional the bag was for me. I did a very honest review on it and uh, I still stand by my review. Uh, but the only thing that I would change is the fact that I haven't decided, uh, to sell the bag. It is a great bag. It um, It is, in my opinion, I believe that this bag is very comfortable because you have the cork handle, uh, but it is a very, very pretty bag. Now, the only difference with the uh, with the Totally, I would say that even though I love the Artsy, and I think the Artsy is a fantastic bag, it's a beautiful bag, the, the Totally adds... Um, you have security because you have the top, uh, the top zipper for closure. And then, uh, you just have, I, I mean, if, if you were to open up the totally, you would be able to see everything at a glance. And I always say that in my videos. And the reason why I say that is because it might be important to some people with the artsy. I've told you guys that sometimes the items tend to get lost or not lost. They tend to hide in the corners. And if you don't have a purse organizer, sometimes it can get kind of chaotic inside of the artsy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and if you have a lot of items in there, it just, just think about your phone ringing. Let's say you don't have it in one of the pockets and your phone's ringing. You know, you're, you're constantly digging your items. If you have quite a bit of items. And what I love about the totally is the fact that it does not lose its structure. This one does. Uh, so for me, you know, I had to really weigh that in because I don't like slouchy bags. Uh, but I think that the totally is a really, really great bag. Um, from the, from what I've heard people say that the, the totally is extremely comfortable to use on your shoulder. It doesn't dig into your shoulder. As I said, the artsy does have the cork handle, but some people say that it's a little too uncomfortable. Uh, so it's just a matter again of personal preference, but, um, I really do, even though I have not added the totally to my collection, I really do appreciate the bag. And I really do like the fact that you have that top zip closure. This bag uh, is a little bit taller. So sometimes you have to, you don't have to dig in, I mean, too deep to get to the items, but it might, this ends up hitting underneath your arm and the totally doesn't do that. It's a little bit more of a, um, it's a little bit more of a safer never full, if that makes any sense. So even though, as I said before, I love the artsy, I really do appreciate, um, how, what, I mean, what the, what the totally, uh, brings to the table. And I keep saying bring to the table. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, definitely I would just go to the boutique, try them both out and 
obviously you will know exactly what you need in your lifestyle. Uh, okay, Crystal O. I'm trying to get a Chanel GST pre-owned, but the seller selling it for th is selling it for thirty six hundred because of the bag because the bag is already discontinued and plus she never carried the bag so it's basically brand new, but the price is a bit too high for the retail price. What do you think? Should I go for it or let me know your opinion? Uh, okay, this is a difficult question. Okay, so the GST in the states retailed for twenty nine hundred dollars when it was available and I believe with tax I paid. Was it thirty one or thirty two hundred? So obviously you're paying four hundred dollars over. Um, thirty six hundred. What would I do? As much as I love the GST, personally, if it was me, if I was looking at getting this bag, I would try to see if I can. Um, get the bag at a better price from that buyer. Obviously, because it's in brand new condition, that definitely, definitely adds to the price. And the fact that it's discontinued, I mean, even more so adds to the price. Uh, but I would see if you can maybe uh, work out an offer. Uh, but I think 3,600 is a little steep. Um, I think the most I would pay, I, uh, this, this is a tough question because I love my GST. I, I love both of them. And oh man, what would I do? Really, what would I do? I would either try to ask them to settle on a lower price or find another GST altogether. Um, you know, I then I think about the multicolor pieces here in the U.S. Here in the U.S., they have gone up so incredibly much. I've told you guys before. Uh, there were cosmetic pouches. There were wallets. Wallets that used to sell for $750 or $800 when they first came out are now, are now selling for 1200 because they're that hard to find and people are paying those prices. So it's all a matter of how much do you really like that bag? And again, the fact that it is brand new, definitely, I mean, I mean, definitely makes it very, very, um, desirable. Uh, but it is a little pricey. I would probably, I would probably try to bring it down just a little bit just to see. I mean, you could always ask the seller, you know, if they've had it on the market for quite some time, you could say, you know what, no one's paying this much for it. What if you brought it down a little bit more Then it's out of your hands? You can always offer, um, you could always make an offer. You never know, but it is a little, uh, over the price tag. Uh, definitely. All right, Sam D 92 how do you feel about the new design of the Vernie key pouch? Someone on the purse forum ordered one and Louis Vuitton had removed the plaque in the front. And when they called to ask, customer service said that this is the new design. Personally, I'm so glad I ordered mine two weeks ago and I received one with the front plaque. All right, so for those of you that don't know, this, um, this actually created quite a buzz on Instagram last week. And, uh, since I checked it out, I have not checked, um, on the, on the website. So it could be, it could have changed by now. Uh, but for those of you that don't know, Louis Vuitton has removed the front plaque on some of the pieces of the Vernie key pouch. Um, I called twice before, uh, last, before I went out last weekend and I had one representative say that they've never heard of it. There's no such thing. And I had another representative say that some of the pieces are now starting to come without the plaque. Now, what we run into the problem is the fact that on the website, as I said before, last time I checked, it was still on there on the website, it shows the plaque. So if now they're starting to roll out the key pouches without the plaque, you got to think about that because it's misrepresentation. If you're looking on the website and you see the front plaque, you got to expect the front plaque, right? For the most part. I know some people like it. Some people think it's tacky. Some people think it's too much. I personally love the feature. And plus you have to think about even though Canada recently had a price increase, this piece is still the same price. So a lot of people are talking about that. They're saying if you're taking something away from it and you're not adding to it, some people thought that they added this back pocket. The back pocket is still back. It has always been there with the Vernie pouch when they, um, when they redid them, when they revamped them, but they took this off. So some people are thinking if you're still charging what you're charging for them and now you're taking off the plaque, shouldn't you charge less or shouldn't you add something more? So you run into that as well. And, uh, personally, um, I looked at the picture on the purse forum and it's kind of weird. I don't know if it's because I'm used to seeing the front plaque on the Vernie pouch. So to me, it just automatically looks weird. You know what I mean? Uh, some people might really like it because as I said before, some people aren't a fan of the plaque. Uh, but it, I don't know. There's just something, it looks, it looks to me unfinished, but 
again, it could be because I'm so used to seeing this front plaque, uh, you know, so I don't know if they're going to add something else. Uh, and here we go with what I talked about last week that now they're starting to change things, um, you know, with, <laughs> with pieces that we really love with pieces that we really hold near and dear to our heart. So kind of like the, the clay, you know, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like there's something that's just going to happen. That's just going to devastate my, my whole out, uh, outlook on Louis Vuitton, but that is what they're doing. They're still charging the same price without the plaque. So if you see it at the boutique or if you end up ordering one and uh, you see it after this video, don't freak out. That plaque um, has now since been removed has since been removed. Uh, okay. Uh, Karen Haas, you posted a picture on Instagram a few weeks ago, contemplating purchasing a luxury vehicle. Have you decided? <laughs> um, I was actually asked on Instagram if, um, what I was currently lusting after. And a few weeks ago, I was really going back and forth between, uh, purchasing a new car. And I wanted to, to give a chance to a luxury car cause I've never had a luxury car. Um, and I've really been thinking about it. We went out and test drove a few and, uh, I was looking at the Porsche Cayenne. I was looking at uh, Mercedes, BMW, and Audi. So those were the four that I was looking at. And, um, a, you know, as much as I would want a luxury car, I think, uh, obviously, they're very beautiful. They're very gorgeous. But the thing that really holds me back is the fact that my, I paid off my card last year. I paid off my car last year. And I, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I love not having a car payment. <laughs> it is awesome. <laughs> it really, uh, allows me to, to be able to buy, <laughs> to buy more goodies if I want, or, uh, you know, just, I don't have that. Uh, I don't have a, um, I don't have a, a payment looming over my head anymore. And I love that feeling. I love that. I mean, how awesome is that? I don't have to worry about, oh, I have to pay this and this. I mean, this and this and this this month. I don't have this car. I have this car payment. I don't have to worry about that. I love that. I love the freedom that I have by not having a car payment. And for those of you that have paid off your cars or for those of you that don't have car payments, don't you agree? <laughs> you know, and I really go back and forth and my hubby's just like, you know, it's up to you. Obviously, you know, you, you're the, you're the financier in the house, uh, you know, in the, in the household. And I want, I really want a luxury car and I keep pushing for, or not pushing for, I keep, um, thinking about a BMW. The BMW always comes on top out of the other three. And I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I'm having too, way too much fun not paying for a car payment. And that just makes me super happy. <laughs> so I haven't decided yet. Um, I think I might let it go for a few more months and then maybe make my decision later on. There, obviously there's no rush. Uh, but yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, girl, most lovely. Is it worth investing on vintage Louis Vuitton retired styles that cost less or save for a brand new current style? Uh, this is a great question. Uh, you know, I'm a big, big fan of the vintage Louis Vuitton bags. Uh, I really like the fact that the canvas seemed, it just seemed a little bit sturdier back then, in my opinion. And, um, you have to think about retired styles. If it's, if you do decide to go with a retired style and, st and start out that way, um, you, ha you run the risk of it not being a popular bag. And then if you were to sell it in the future, you wouldn't get as much as you, um, maybe as you paid. Uh, but if you want to just try out Louis Vuitton, it's a lot, it's a lot more different than, than it is now. The canvas is a lot different. Uh, the vaquetta is a lot more different. And, uh, I, like I said before, I'm a big fan, huge fan of vintage Louis Vuittons. And I'm hoping I find one in particular that I have had my eye on for three years now, and I have yet to find one. I'm not going to say what it is. I'm hoping <laughs> I can uh, share with you guys when I find it, but, uh, you know, it all depends. Uh, you can save for a brand new one or a, a brand new bag that you can ultimately, again, think about the resale value. But if you're going for a bag that you just really, really like, cause you think it's pretty and it just happens to be a vintage Louis Vuitton bag, then go for it. Uh, you know, they had some interesting, some fun designs, uh, in the eighties and in the early nineties that, that they don't have anymore. And, uh, I think it would be fun to, to, to definitely invest in a vintage Louis Vuitton. And, um, it all depends if it's your personal preference then go for it. Uh, okay. Andrea Carr, what is one of the best features your hubby has uh, physically and personality? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> physically I'd say one of his best features 
are his arms. I love his arms. Uh, he is very strong. I always tell him you're as strong as an ox. <laughs> uh, but I love his arms. I love the way I feel when I'm in his arms. I know it's super corny. I know, I know. But I just, I love that feeling. I feel like I feel like we can conquer the world together, and I feel that nothing will happen to me if I'm in his arms. I know, I, I, as I said before, I know it's kind of corny, and some people are like, oh, stupid, but <laughs> that's just how I feel. I feel so, like, secure in his arms, if that makes any sense. Uh, and his personality, um, what do I like the most? I love so many things. I love... Obviously, I think he's a very attractive man. He's a very good-looking man. So his uh, physical appearance, I, I, I love. Uh, and his personality, I love the fact that, oh, there's just so many different things I love. Um, I just love his patience is a major, major thing for me. I mean, anyone that can deal with my craziness, with my with my lunacy deserves a, an award. And he is just so, he's such a kind, kind spirit. He's so sweet. And he's just, it, I mean, we're completely opposite, you know, and I, I love how, how tender he is, if that makes any sense. He's just such, I don't know. He is definitely the yin to my yang. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, one of his best, best traits is his patience. He is just such an amazing guy. And I'm so happy that I'm married to him. And I just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, some people might think, really, that's what you like about him. He's funny. He's, um, there's just so many things I love about him. And I did, I have, I did ask him about the, uh, you know, the whole, story time and us talking about our story and how we got together. And he gave me a maybe, <laughs> you know, I always said that I want to, uh, I always respect his decision about not being on my videos. Obviously I never want to push for that. I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable and at any point in time, but, uh, he said maybe so fingers crossed <laughs> and he'll just end up sitting on my chair here and then I'll ask him questions. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I would have to say that those are the two features that I love the most about him. Uh, okay. Uh, Alicia Mills, uh, what do you miss the most? What do you miss the, oh, do you miss your old job? What do you miss the most? What was the hardest part of your job? Uh, what do I miss the most? Or do I miss my job? Um, I really miss the people. Um, you know, at any, at any one point in time, uh, or, or on any day, on any occasion, I would talk to, a hundred, a uh, hundred employees. And I just like conversing with them. I'm a huge people person. And now with my business, I don't converse with that many people. So I really do miss that. I miss the stories. I miss laughing. My goodness. I miss the jokes. I miss all of that. Um, I don't miss a lot about it, <laughs> but I do miss some of the people. And, um, what do you miss the most? Like I said before, the people and what was the hardest part of my job? The hardest part of my job when I worked at the company that I worked for was the fact that I was in, uh, I was part of the management staff. And at one point I had, um, 300 people that, that I would, you know, look after. And it was really hard because a lot of those employees, uh, had been with the company for over 20 years, for 25 years. And some of those ended up trying to push the envelope a little much. And I always took pride in the fact that I was always, always fair and consistent at my job. Uh, I never tried to give any one person an upper hand over another. And, um, sometimes uh, people would think that I was being, uh, really harsh or I was being very strict at my job. And it wasn't that I was trying to, I was never strict to the point where I was trying to prove myself to anybody by any means whatsoever. And I was very good at my job and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I was, and I really enjoyed what I was doing. Uh, but sometimes people would, you know, especially friends that I had that we worked with and I would always be able to differentiate between, uh, friendships and, you know, and the workplace. And sometimes these, these friends would end up saying, come on, Manny, come on, Manny. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. You're my friend. And at the end of the day, it's not that I'm trying again to prove, uh, to prove a point to anybody. It's not that I was trying to be harsh on purpose, but a lot of my friends and a lot of people at work wouldn't understand that my job was my bread and butter. I mean, 
having that job was how I was able to pay my mortgage. You know what I mean? So again, it wasn't the fact that I was trying to prove a point. I wasn't trying to single anyone out. As I said before, I always took pride in the fact that I was fair and consistent. And, um, I always followed the rules. I tried to follow the rules as best as I could. And I, you know, some people would, as I said before, would try to push the envelope or try to, uh, Oh, come on. It's not that big of a deal. And it's not that big of a deal. And obviously there was always consequences for, for things that would happen. And, um, if, if any one employee ended up, uh, doing something wrong, I would hold them accountable for it. And they, I mean, they hated me for it. Um, I had a few nicknames at work that I ended up finding out about. Obviously we all, we've all been there and there's always those employees that try to push the envelope, uh, you know, and it didn't bother me. So I, I, before I became part of the management staff, I had quite a bit of friends. And then after I left, I didn't have that many friends because of the same thing. They felt that they could just, uh, disrespect my, um, my position and just kind of be like, Oh, she's, it's just men. You just leave it at that. And it's like, no, you have to understand if it was the other way around, I would respect you because of the position that you're in. So that was the hardest part of my job. Sometimes being able to, um, to show people and to, to let them know that I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be a certain way, but you can't just be disrespectful because, you know, we're friends outside of work. You know what I mean? So that was definitely very, very hard. Uh, okay. Uh, and the last question, <laughs> this makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean. This is from Jacqueline B, but why do you always laugh in your videos? <laughs> <laughs> and I, obviously I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh because to be a jerk. I'm laughing because it makes me laugh that someone asks that question. I laugh because I'm a happy person and I've gotten this question quite a bit, um, on some of my last videos and I don't take offense to it by any means whatsoever. I just, I love, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy being on, on YouTube. And I really love interacting with all of you guys. And can you imagine in my videos, if I had this frown on my face, let, and let's say, let's, let's, let me read that again with a frown on my face. Jacqueline B. Why do you always laugh in your video? You know, like it doesn't, it doesn't, that's not me. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm a very happy person. I've told you guys in my personal Q and A, it took me a long time to get in the place that I'm at right now. And I love it. I love life. And you know, I'm just a positive human being. And if I can portray that to you guys, then that's great. And some people might not like it. Some people say that I'm a little too much, you know, in the morning, they're like, she's super happy. She's too happy. I don't care. I'm a happy person. Person. And I like to laugh, <laughs> you know, and if you guys ever met me outside of YouTube, I laugh like a hyena at everything. I'm just constantly laughing. So <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just one of my personality traits and it might be good. It might be bad, but I like it. <laughs> All right, you guys. So that does it for our Minx Monday Q and A. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, um, as promised, uh, I will be doing, uh, the goodies that I got for Valentine's day tomorrow. And then I also have a review on a Chanel, uh, wallet that I have been asked for for quite some time now. So that does it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.